Hi everybody. Welcome to the third in a series of videos where I talk about the three most common motorcycle helmet safety standards discussed here in the U.S. That being DOT, the federally required standard, uh, the European ECE, and the Snell 2015 standards. Now, um, in the last video I talked about the maximum G-force accepted under each of those three and the why behind it. Um, one of the fairly common misconceptions that I hear uh, is that Snell, has, Snell helmets are too hard. Well, you know, if you go back in time, you'll see that they have progressively reduced the maximum G-force that, that they allow. And in fact, uh, now they're basically, essentially they're the same as, as ECE. Their two largest head forms, as I've said in an earlier video, have a slightly lower G-force to, to accommodate the, uh, the larger head forms. And that's due to the mass, which is part of the equation in figuring out energy, um, specifically kinetic energy, which is one of the main things that we need to look at when we're developing safety equipment. So um, in, in the modern day, DOT has a 400G standard, which some people think is, is really high. Um, I would disagree. I think it's a manageable amount of energy. But more importantly, DOT has something in their standard that, that is seldom discussed and most people don't even know about, which is a uh, maximum duration or dwell time at or above a specific G-force. And with the DOT, that's four milliseconds above 150 Gs and two milliseconds above 200 Gs. So uh, duration comes into play because it's not just how hard, but how long is it sustaining that higher energy level. That's where a person can really start to get hurt. Um, the ECE uses something called the head, in, excuse me, head injury criterion, which is often used in the automotive industry. And it's a measure of the potential of head injury in an automobile accident or in assorted, um, assorted crash situations. It can be used for a variety of, of different types of equipment and it does take into account dwell. So in that sense, ECE also has the standard where Snell at this time does not. Um, I've, my impression of Snell, just for the record, is that they feel it's better for a person, it would be better for a person to end up with a concussion, but to be able to survive the crash than not. And that's a difficult thing to argue. So um, there you go, duration. I think it's a very important part of uh, the overall consideration when you're building a safety helmet. And what's interesting is, as I've mentioned before, if you take the DOT standard and the Snell standard, or the DOT and ECE, again, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. So once again, I hope that that information helps. I want to remind you that nothing that I'm saying here is intended as advice. It's simply information with the hopes that you'll go out and look at the standards and uh, make a decision on which one makes the most sense for you. And having said that, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link in the description below that has each of the standards as well as a spreadsheet that shows a comparison of what the different standards offer. So thank you for your time and we'll see you again soon.